If Humans Were Built to Last by S.J. Olshansky, Bruce A. Karnas, and Robert N. Butler. Bigger ears, rewired eyes, curved neck. Person designed for a healthy old age might possess the features highlighted here along with countless other external and internal adjustments. Shorter limbs, stature, forward tilting under torso, extra padding around joints, reverse knee joints. A hundred years young. Bulging discs, fragging, fragile bones, fractured hips, torn ligaments, varicose veins, cataracts, hearing loss, hernias, and hemorrhoids. The list of bodily malfunctions that plague us at, as we age is long and fall to, all too familiar. Why do we fall apart just as we reach what should be the prime of life? I'm sorry. The living machines we call our bodies deteriorate because they were not des designed for extended operation and because we are now we now push them to function long last long past their warranty period period the human body is artistically beautifully beautiful and worthy of all the wonder and amazement it invokes but from an engineer's perspective it is complex Networks of bones, muscles, tendons, valves, and joints that are directly analogs to the fallible pulleys, pumps, levers, and hinges in machines. As we plunge further into our poster productive, post, -produ post reproductive years, our joints and other anatomical features that serve us well or cause no problems at younger ages, reveal their imperfections. They wear out or otherwise contribute to the health problems that become common in the later years. In evolutionary terms, we harbor flaws because natural selection, the force that molds our genetically controlled traits, does not aim for protection, perfection and or endless good health. If body plans allows individuals to survive long enough to reproduce and in humans and various other organisms to raise their young, then that plan will be selected. That is, individuals robust enough to reproduce all past their genes and therefore their bodies designed to the next generation. Designs that seriously hamper survival in youth will be weeded out, selected against, because most affected individuals will die before having a chance to produce offspring. More important anatomical and phys physiological quirks that become disabling only after someone has reproduced will spread. For example, if a body plan leads to total collapse at age 50, but does not interfere with earlier reproduction, the arrangement will get passed along despite the harmful consequences late in life. Had we been crafted for extended operation, we would have fewer flaws capable of making us miserable in our later days. Evolution does not work that way, however. Instead, it cobbles together new features by tinkering with existing ones in a way that would have made Rube Goldberg proud. The upright posture of humans is, is a case in point. It was, adapt, it was adapted from a body plan that had mammals walking on all fours. The tinkering undoubtedly added our early hominid ancestors standing on our own two feet is thought to have promoted tool use and enhanced intelligence. Our backbone has since adapted somewhat to the awkward change. The lower vertebrae have grown bigger to cope with the increased vertical pressure and our spine has curved a bit to keep us from toppling over. Yet these fixes do not ward off an array of problems that arise from our bi bipedal stance. What if recently there Recently, the three of us began pondering what the human body would look like had it been constructed specifically for a healthy long life. The anatomical re revisions depicted on these pages 
that follow are fanciful and incomplete. Nevertheless, we present them to draw attention to a serious point. Aging is frequently described as a disease that can be reversed or eliminated. Indeed, many purvey purveyors of youth in a bottle would have us believe that medical problems associated with aging are our own fault, arising primarily from our descendant decadent lifestyles. Certainly any fool can shorten his or her life, but it grossly is grossly unfair to blame people for the health consequences of inheriting a body that lacks perfect maintenance and repair systems and was not built for extended use or perpetual health. We would still wear out over time. Even if some mythical ideal lifestyle could be identified and adopted, this reality means that aging and many of its accompanying disorders are neither unnatural nor avoidable. No simple interventions can make up for the countless imperfections that permeate our anatomy and are revealed by the passage of time. We are confident, however, that the biomedia, bi biomedical science will be able to ease certain of the maladies that result. Investigators are rapidly identifying and discerning the functions of the myriad genes, developing pharmaceuticals to control them and learning how to harness and enhance the extraordinary repair capabilities that are already exist inside of our bodies. These profound advances will eventually help compensate for many of the design flaws contained within us all. Walk this way. A number of the debilitating and even some of the fatal disorders of aging stem in part from bipedal locomotion and an upright posture, ironically some same features that have enable, enabled humans species to flourish. Every step we take places extraordinary pressure on our feet, ankles, knees, and back. Structures that support the weight of the whole body above them over the course of just a single day. Discs in the lower back are subjected to pressures equivalent to several tons per square inch. Over time, all this pressure takes its toll as does its repetitive use. Bones that lose minerals after age 30. Demineralizing ma makes bones susceptible to fractures and in extreme cases can cause osteoporosis, severe bone degeneration, curvature of the spine and the dowager's hump. These are the flaws, by the way. Sorry about that. <laughs> Valuable spinal discs. Years of pressure of, on the spongy disc that separate the vertebrae can cause them to slip, rupture, or bulge. They can, they, then they or the vertebrae themselves can press painfully on nerves. Muscles that lose mass and tone. Such atrophy, atrophy can impede all activities, including walking in the abdomen, hernias, can arise as the intestines, always pulled by gravity, protrude through weak spots in the abdominal wall, placid. Abdominal muscles also uh, can contribute to lower back pain. Leg veins. Veins in the legs <clears throat> become enlarged and twisted when small valve that should snap shut between heartbeats to keep blood moving up toward the heart, malfunction causing blood to pool, severe varicocystes can lead to swelling and pain, and on rare occasions to life-threatening blood clots, normal direction of blood flow, malfunctioning check valve, pooled blood. Relatively short rib cage. Current cage does not fully enclose and protect most internal organs. Joints that wear. As joints are used repeatedly through several years, their lubricants can grow thin, causing the bones to grind against each other. The resulting pain may be exasperated by osteoarthritis and other inflammatory disorders.
Maybe they do that. Use of our joints and the consistent, constant tugging of gravity on our tissues. Although gravity tends to bring us down in the end, we do possess some features that combat its ever-present pull. For instance, an intricate network of tendons helps to tether our organs to the spine, keeping them from slumping down and crushing one another. But these anatomical fixes like the body in general were never meant to work forever. Had longevity and persistence, good health been over, overarching aim of evolution arrangements such as those depicted below might have been become commonplace fixes. Shorter statue would provide a lower center of gravity, perhaps preventing the falls that often fracture demineralizing bones, cage with added ribs, could help prevent her hernias and other problems by holding organs in place more effectively. Thicker bones would protect against breakage during falls. Knee able to bend backward would make the bones less likely to grind and deteriorate, especially if the knee never locked in place. But the absence of a locking mechanism would make it harder to stand for very long, so further modifications would be needed. Forward tilting upper torso would relieve pressure on vertebrae, thereby lessening the risk of ruptured or slipped disc, which contribute along with weakening abdominal muscles to lower back pain. Curved neck with enlarged vertebrae would counterbalance the tilted long tilted torso and enable the head to stay up and face forward. Thicker discs would resist destructive pressures. Extra muscles and fat would add weight on the bones, which would help counter the effects of demineralizing. They would also cushion bones against breaking during falls. Leg veins and more. Uh, with check valves. I'm trying to get rid of that thing. I'm sorry. Um, would combat the development of varicose veins. Larger hamstrings and tendons would help support the leg and hip. Plan ahead. Various parts of the head and neck had become problematic with disturbing re regulatory as people age. Consider the eye. The human version is an evolutionary marvel, but its complexity provides many opportunities for things to go wrong over a long lifetime. Our vision diminishes as the protective fluid of the cornea becomes less transparent over time. The muscles that control the opening of the iris and the focusing of the lens atrophy would and lose responsiveness and the lens thickens and yellows impairing visual acu acuity and color perception further the retina responsible for transmitting images to the brain can detach fairly easily from the back of the eye leading to blindness many of those problems would be dif difficult to design away but the squid eye suggest an arrangement that could have reduced the likelihood of a retinal detachment. A few anatomical tweaks could also have preserved hearing in the elderly sub suboptimal design of the upper respiratory and digestive systems make choking another risk for older people. A simple rearrangement would have fixed that problem, albeit at the cost of severe trade-offs. Enlarged mobile, these are the flaws. I'm gonna start at the top here, I'm so sorry. Ear with fragile transmitters, hair cells of the inner ear, which relay sound information to the brain become damaged by exposure to loud noises, esophagus, trachea, and epiglottis, detached retina, optic nerve, weak link between retina and back of the eye. This frail connection exists in part because the optic nerve, which carries visual signals from the retina to the brain, connects the, to the retina only from the inside of the eye. 
not from the back. Common upper passageway for food and air. When food travels toward the esophagus flap-like tab of cartilage, the epiglottis closes off the trachea or windpipe, a progressive loss of muscle tone with age decreases the tightness of the seal, raising the risk of inhaling food or drink. Might stabilize the retinous connection to the back of the eye, helping to prevent retinal detachment. Raised trachea would help food and drink to bypass the windpipe more effectively. The design would need refining though because it would disrupt breathing through the mouth and the ability to speak. Enlarge mobile outer ear would collect sound with greater efficiency to co compensate for the internal breakdowns. More plentiful and durable hair cells would preserve hearing longer. A call a plumber, an experienced plumber looking at the anatomy of a man's prostate might suspect the work of a young apprentice because the urethra, the tube leading from the bladder passes straight through the inside of the gland. I'm so sorry, I got lost. Leading from the bladder passes straight through the inside of the gland. This configuration may have as yet unknown benefits, but it eventually causes urinary problems in many men, including weak flow and infrequent and a frequent need to void. Women also cope with plumbing problems as they age, particularly in continents. Both sexes could have been spared much discomfort if evolution had made some simple modifications in anatomical design. We'll start with the male prostate. Um, let's see, male prostate side view, direction of the urine flow. We'll start with the flaw, urethra. The prostate becomes enlarged in one of every two males at some point in life. As it grows, it squeezes the urethra, potentially obstructing the flow of urine. Total obstruction can be fatal. The fix, urethra hugging outside of the prostate would not be squeezed if the prostate became enlarged. Here's the fix. Female bladder front view, ligament and urethra, the flaw, muscles and ligaments that weaken with time. Particularly after multiple pregnancies, the muscles of the pelvic floor and the bladder and the ligaments that support the bladder can sag leading to incontinence. The fix, stronger sphincter muscles and bladder and more durable ligaments would increase control over bladder function. This is the end of the extra assignment that is due for this project. Thank you.